Yep, this is Zist. This question comes directly from the UE forum where a user said, hey, I just want to be able to damage something or heal something in Lyra. How do I do that? All right, guys, this actor in front of me here, the target dummy, has an ability system. It has a health set, a combat set, and a health component. So this is all done in C++, and I'm going to show you how to make actor, give it health, do damage to it, heal it, and kill it in the video today. And this is all going to be done in C++. So here is the target dummy blueprint. This derives from XCL target dummy actor, which is C++ code that I'll give you. The important things to note here are it has an ability system component. This is required by gameplay ability system. It also has a health component, which is optional, but highly recommended. The interaction component you can ignore. The actor widget is the, uh, the piece that shows the health above the actor. So that's nice to see, but not required. The mesh, of course, is the body of the thing, so not very important. In the target dummy itself, in the class defaults, here are some other important things. The health set, the combat set, and which abilities do we give this actor when it spawns. So let's take a look at this. In fact, you're not going to have access to this ability set on spawn, but here it is. It's very easy. This is a Lyra ability set. And here it is, target dummy ability set. Abilities empty, attributes empty, but for gameplay effects, I'm granting this target dummy heal periodic. So when the target dummy spawns, it gets this gameplay effect added to it. So here's the gameplay effect. If we open this up, this is based on gameplay effect parent heal, which is a Lyra gameplay effect and it uses the Lyra heal execution calculation class. It then takes base heal, which is zero, and adds 20 every one second. So 20 health heal every one second is what this gameplay effect does, and that's why in the video you saw it ticking 20 hit points per second health. That's where that comes from. So now we're gonna look at a little bit different view here. Uh, in this mode, I'm controlling these AI bots. So we still have a target dummy over here, and the target dummy cannot die, but the bots can die. So here we'll have her pick up the, the ax and go and attack this target dummy. Oops, can we see his health? Yes, there we go. So there you go, so she attacks him. You know, he's not gonna die. This is exactly the same as in the other game mode that I just showed you, so there you go. He's immortal, but she's not immortal. Spawn another bot here. And we're gonna have this one kill the chick. There you go, Quinn is dead. So the bots will die. The target dummy will not die. Here we can kill this first bot. Ooh, that's kind of some funny little clipping. There you go, he's dead. So whether the the stuff dies or doesn't die is up to you. Either way, it's the same as far as their health, how you damage, how you heal. So to illustrate this a little bit better, I gave the bots some abilities. So we can tell them, damage yourself, and he does 55 damage to himself. Or heal yourself, and he does 20 healing. And so each time I do this, it's activating an ability, which is applying a gameplay effect. Now, I am playing this in multiplayer mode, so I'm a client connected to a server, and these abilities are all working. Hooray, Lyra. But let's take a look at gameplay ability system itself and see how is it that we actually make something die, or heal, or damage. We take the target actor that we want to damage, we get its ability system component, and we apply a gameplay effect. The effect that we apply is this one, GE's I damage, which is here. This is just a GE damage basic instant from uh, Lyra. We're overriding the basic one. It uses Lyra damage execution calculation class. 
It takes the base damage of the combat component, which is zero in our case, and it adds 55 damage. So it does 55 damage when it runs. So this is it. This is all the code that it takes to damage an actor. For a heal, it's exactly the same. You take the target you want to heal, you get its ability system component, you apply a gameplay effect. The only difference is, instead of applying this damage effect, you apply a heal effect. So, how do you kill something? Well, that's up to you. In Lyra, the way it's done is that there is this GA hero death ability, and this is based on a C++ ability specifically for the death. This is set to trigger anytime the gameplay event, gameplay event dot death fires. So all pawns get this in Lyra by default. And anytime the pawn receives this gameplay event death, it executes this ability, which is what kills the hero. So you can use this methodology or you can do it differently. I will describe in detail how to do it differently on the blog and we'll cover that a little bit here in this video. So this is code from my ZisCore Lyra plugin, my XCL or Excel plugin. Uh, I'm gonna make this available to you. So you'll actually get, not exactly this code, but very, very similar, you know, and enough to follow along for sure. So you don't need to worry about screenshotting this video to look at code because I put it on GitHub and I will link that in the video description. For now though, I'm just gonna take you through this real quick. This is an XCL actor with abilities, which is based on actor and implements the ability system interface, which is required for gas. I'm giving this an ability set for spawn, which is just a Lyra ability set. Uh, this is optional, but useful. There's a constructor, there's some actor stuff going on. The two methods that I'm adding here are initialize ability system and uninitialize ability system. We then implement the ability system component interface. And we then also have to have an ability system component on this actor. And in order to support the optional ability set on spawn, we also then need to keep track of granted handles on spawn. So this is a very simple, very minimal implementation of what does it take to get an actor to put an ability system component on it and initialize that correctly so that you can use it. On the right side here, now we have the implementation. So for the constructor, we are setting the actor to replicate. This is very important. You must replicate the actor for a multiplayer game. We initialize the ability system component and then Lyra recommends to set the net update frequency to be very high. That's quite high. Um, in post initialize components, before we initialize, or before we do post initialize on the actor's components, we initialize the ability system. So this is a method that we just added, initialize ability system. So this runs before begin play. So by the time begin play runs on this actor, it has a fully functional ability system. On end play, before we actually end play, we uninitialize the ability system. So you can look at these in more detail, but they're pretty simple. Initialize ability system, this is required. And then if we are on the server and we have an ability set, then we set that ability set on spawn. When it's time to tear down the actor, we uninitialize everything. And that is it. This is very, very simple actor code that implements an ability system component. Now this actor does not have any health. You cannot damage it, you cannot heal it, but you can give it abilities, you can give it attributes, and so that's exactly what we're gonna do. We have a second class here, actor with abilities and health, and this derives from actor with abilities. So it uses this one that we just looked at as the base, an actor that has an ability set, and this adds health to it. So to do that, we have these things. First of all, the most important thing is the health set, Second most important thing probably is the health component, and then third is the combat set. So all three of these things are required by Lyra, and that's all this class does, is implement it. So looking then here at the constructor for the class, we create the objects, combat set, health set, health component. We also are then overriding from 
actor with abilities, both the initialize and uninitialize methods. And so in the initialize, we do the base initialize first, the super first. Then we add the combat set and the health set to the ability system component, and we initialize the health component. And then again, we undo all that stuff and uninitialize. And that's it. So this class, the actor with abilities and health, has an ability system and has a health set, health component, and a combat set. So now you can take this class and create any actor in the world that you want that can be damaged or healed or killed. Now we look at the target dummy actor. So the target dummy actor is an actor with abilities and health. And this is my own thing, interactable target, ignore that. What's important for you is this is an actor with abilities and health. So let's look now at the target dummy actor C++. Very, very simple. All that happens here is we initialize this mesh component, which means, oops, sorry, this is the mesh component, so we can see it in the world. And we initialize the interaction component, which again is necessary for me so that I can tell it, hey, damage yourself or heal yourself or whatever, right? But you don't need those. It's, doesn't, it's not related to actually applying the damage. Okay, it's just really to me interacting with the actor. So very simple, take an actor with abilities and health and initialize whatever you want for the actor. You know, look, there's almost nothing here. In fact, there is nothing here that has anything to do with health or dying or anything. That's all been implemented by the base classes. You will notice this trickery here. This is um, Unreal C++ uh, constructor magic using object initializer. I love object initializer. What this says is in our target dummy, when we are initializing our super, we want to set the default object class, the sub object with the name health set. And we want to change that type to be this one, XCL target dummy help. So how does that work? Let's pull this over and look at this. So here's the base class, actor with abilities and health. When it creates the health set, Create default sub object. The object name is health set name. The type is Lyra health set. But for our target dummy, we want to change the type to be target dummy health set, not the default Lyra health set. And that's why our target dummy cannot be killed because it uses this special health set that doesn't let the health drop below one. So most actors use this Lyra health set. This allows them to die. The target dummy, this is how I changed it. I override the type of the health set to be my own custom type, which will not allow the actor to die. As usual, I've documented this on my blog and I will link this in the video description so you can look at it. I'm not gonna go through this whole thing in detail. I just wanna quickly go through it here. So you need to give your actor an ability system component, a health set, a combat set, and a health component. Now, if you're an expert, you know what you're doing, you wanna do some modifications here, you can remove the dependency for the combat set. The health component is pretty much required, but technically you could get rid of this as well. So why did I not just look at Lyra character? Here's why you can read that if you want. How do I damage actor? Here's how you damage it. How do I kill an actor? Okay, this part we are gonna go through in a little bit more detail because I just kind of briefly went over. So at zero health, the health set will fire off this event, on out of health. You must use this to kill your actor. Now Lyra does it for you because Lyra has the health component attached, which fires this gameplay event dot death gameplay event. In addition to that, Lyra puts the GA hero death ability on all pawns that it spawns, which triggers on the gameplay event dot death event. So the existence of the health component is what allows your actor to die in Lyra and for that death to be replicated to all the remote clients. So again, you can do this differently if you want, but this is how Lyra sets it up. And so the health component start death is the method which actually initiates the procedure of killing the actor. And that is what the GA hero death ability calls to make your hero die. So what you then need to do is listen for things like health components death started or even death finished and react to those. So for example, Lyra listens for the health component uh, death started in 
B hero default, which all base or all Lyra characters are based on this B hero default blueprint. And so this says, look, health component on death started event, do this stuff to prepare for death. This doesn't actually kill the actor, but it sets the actor up to be killed. It plays the death montage, it unregisters senses, it ragdolls, it hides weapons, and then this is an ability that you can override and do other stuff with it, or this method, sorry. So that's death. How do you heal? It's exactly the same as how you damage. So example code. There are links here. You can click these links. Here we go. Actor with abilities, for example. This is on GitHub. You can access this. Here is very similar to the code that I went over in this video, but slightly modified. Header, CPP, you know, here. You can go here and read this shit if you really want to and understand what it is that you're looking at here. Um, we saw this already in the video. That's it. So yeah, so now you know in a gameplay ability system game, how do you damage, how do you heal, how do you kill an actor? This is specific to Lyra, but the principles here apply to any gameplay ability system game, and you're gonna want to have your own health set, combat set, health component in your own game, so they may not be exactly the same as Lyra, but they're gonna be very similar. If this video doesn't suck, please like, subscribe, share it with someone who might find it interesting or learn something. If you have questions or comments, please post them. I do read them and I appreciate the feedback, both positive and negative, that you guys give me. I think it helps me to make better videos. So thank you for your feedback and have a nice day. See you next time.